Russian troops have relentlessly stormed Abdivka, an industrial city that has been the center of recent heavy fighting on the Eastern Front, in an all-out war effort to encircle Ukrainian forces there. Facing an enemy with superior numbers of troops and armored vehicles, Ukraine's defenders defended themselves with the help of small drones flown over the front lines costing a few hundred dollars, equipped with explosives capable of destroying more than $2 million worth of Russian armored vehicles. The recent loss of large amounts of Russian equipment and personnel around the city of Abdivka will likely limit Russia's ability to conduct effective offensive operations in the long term, the Institute for the Study of War ISW reported. The Russian command has sent reinforcements to offset losses and sustain offensives. However, replacing destroyed equipment could prove difficult. The destruction of equipment around Avdivka appears to have been larger in scale than in Vuladar. The latest debacle around Avdivka will likely worsen Russian equipment deficits and reverse any progress in restoring degraded mechanized capabilities, ISW analysts concluded. In a recent attack, it shows a Russian armored column carrying out an attack on the front line near Avdivka with two T-80 tanks in front and followed by three BMP-2s and finally a T-90 tank. The column should have been easily targeted by the Ukrainian military using an anti-tank missile system. However, this time the Ukrainian military sent a swarm of FPV drones and one by one the drone operators attacked the Russian armored vehicles. After the strike, it is likely that Russian troops abandoned the damaged armored vehicles, which were then targeted by FPV drones to ensure they could not be used again. At least eight FPV drones carried out the attack. Another attack showed Ukrainian FPV drone operators attacking Russian troops who wanted to hide in frontline trenches. One of the soldiers is seen attempting to shoot, apparently in an attempt to make the FPV drone that was approaching him crash. But his assault rifle proves ineffective as the drone crashes into their trench and explodes spectacularly. The FPV, or first person view, drones used in the attack are equipped with internal cameras that allow skilled operators to direct them at targets with high accuracy. The deployment of FPV drones by the Ukrainian Aerial Attack Unit has marked a significant development in the realm of aerial warfare. As the conflict continues, the operators are likely to further refine their techniques, leveraging this remote piloting technology to maintain the upper hand against Russian forces. FPV drones, often highlighted in media for striking Russian targets, have gained prominence due to their cost-effectiveness and precision. These drones, however, are not seen as a complete replacement for traditional weapons like mortars. Mikola Volokov, commander of the Terra Aerial Reconnaissance Unit, emphasizes that while FPV drones are highly effective, they are situational tools, limited in adverse weather conditions unlike mortars which can fire in snow, rain, and fog. But reliance solely on FPV drones could be a tactical vulnerability. For instance, dense fog could impede their use, exposing defense lines to armored vehicle assaults. From February 24, 2022 to date, the Ukrainian Defense Forces have eliminated approximately 354,960 Russian troops, including 1,010 in the last day. Ukrainian forces have also destroyed 5,899 Russian tanks, 10,956 armored fighting vehicles, 8,366 artillery systems and other Russian combat equipment. According to Ukrainform, the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported this on Facebook. Meanwhile, the task of the Ukrainian Defense Forces for the nearest future is not to let the enemy advance and inflict maximum losses on Russian forces. That's according to Roman Kostenko, Secretary of the Parliament's National Security, Defense and Intelligence Committee, who spoke in an interview with Ukrainform. As for next year, I guess the war will be going on pretty much the same as it is this year, remaining positional with some elements of active developments. Therefore, it will be a year of mobilization and preparation. It would be a right thing to mobilize and prepare. Our task for the near term is not let the enemy advance and to inflict maximum losses on them, 
which will set up conditions for our own advance and liberation of territories, Kostenko noted. To this end, Ukraine's defense forces need long-range missiles to hit Russian HQs, warehouses, and supply routes at their operational rear. Of course, it would be great to have missiles that could reach Russian territory, their infrastructure and military facilities. I hope we will have such an opportunity, stressed Kostenko. Ukraine also needs artillery rounds of various calibers for active combat operations, the secretary noted, adding that the army's current needs include equipment, ammunition, and artillery systems. We need a large number of drones of various types along with munitions, e-warfare systems, and surface-to-air missile systems to shoot down as many drones and missiles as possible, the committee secretary emphasized. He stressed the need to explain to partners that the missiles now being downed over Ukraine by their weapons could one day target their cities if the supply of air defense capabilities halted. They should realize that they are simply giving us resources so that they don't have to engage in a fight, noted Kostenko.